Okay. Anyway. So beyond technology, there's all these other ways that games are creeping into places we didn't think about. Fantasy football's been around forever. It used to be a nerdly game for nerdly nerds. Now everyone plays it. Your grandmother probably plays fantasy football. Like, everybody is playing it. It's just, it's just everywhere. It's a game uh, that leeches off a game. Geocaching. Because it's cooler to go for a walk in the woods when there's a treasure chest at the end. The Simpsons had their 20th anniversary, and Fox said, we're going to do a scavenger hunt. In each of the shows we have this week, we're going to hide a Simpsons reference in every show. Watch all the shows, find the references, and we'll give you a prize. Watching television became a game. DARPA wanted to figure out wh what are people able to figure out through crowdsourcing, so they made, they made a game. They, they put these red balloons all over the country and said, let's see who can find them first. And everybody raced to find the red balloons and did DARPA's research for them. Weight Watchers, they have this whole point system, which is very much like a game. And if anybody has uh, the new Ford hybrid car, um, okay, I got it, it's got a speedometer, and then it's got a gas gauge. And what are those leaves? What the hell is that? The more gas you save, the more the plant grows. <laughs> they put a virtual pet in your car, and it changes the way people drive. Games have crept out, and they're going everywhere. Right? Oh, and so, but now here's a question I'm going to put to you. Who do you think is designing these games? Skilled game designers? No, not really. Just like whoever's there is doing it. Imagine if skilled game designers get a hold of these kinds of things. Lee Sheldon is a great example. He's teaching, he's a game designer, some of you I'm sure know. He's teaching at University of Indiana now. And one of the first things he did was, he, you know what, this grading system kind of sucks. Because school's a game, right? You, you go, you get scores, you take, you know, and, and you come out, there's a leaderboard, you know. And he said, oh, I'm going to do this better. He doesn't give out grades for each assignment. He gives out experience points. And you level up through the class. And, and, and so class attendance is up. Class participation is up. Homework uh, is, is turned in often and better because it's a better structure. It's a better system. Imagine when the game designers get a hold of all this garbage. The gas points and the shopping points and your coffee points and your airline points. All these points and points and points. Imagine when they're all designed and, and, then, and when they can be sensed um, and, and these things start to come together a little bit. Because sensors are what's happening now. That's what's changing things. Natal is going to come out. And it's got cameras. It's going to sense every joint of your body. The DSi is out, and it's got cameras, and no one knows what they're for, but someone's going to figure it out. <laughs> and, and technology keeps getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, and there's going to be sensors everywhere detecting so many things in your life. And these things are going to be able to be used for, for gameplay. So um, we're moving on a road towards disposable technology. If anyone here ever bought a Furby, right, the Furby costs like $20, $30. It has more technology in it than they used to put a man on the moon. And many people have now thrown out their Furbies because it's like it's kind of dumb and they throw it out. It's disposable technology. We're, before too long, going to get to the point where every soda can, every cereal box is going to be able to have a CPU, a screen, and a camera on board it and a Wi-Fi connector so that it can be connected to the Internet. And what will that world be like? Well, I think it'll be like this. You'll get up in the morning to brush your teeth. And the toothbrush can sense that you're brushing your teeth. And so, hey, good job for you. <laughs> Ten points for brushing your teeth. And it can measure how long, and you're supposed to brush them for three minutes. And you did. Uh, good job. You brushed your teeth for three minutes. And so you get a bonus for that. And, hey, you brush your teeth every day this week. Another bonus. And, right, and who cares? The toothpaste company, the toothbrush company, the more you brush, the more toothpaste you use, they have a vested financial interest. You go to breakfast, there's the cornflakes. On the back, there's a little uh, web game that you can play. While you eat, instead of reading the back, you play a game while you eat your cornflakes. And uh, you, you get that, and you get 10 points just for eating the cornflakes. And then it turns out you can see your list of friends who also have cornflakes and the scores that they got because you're Wi-Fi and, and Facebook connected and everything. And so, you know, you get five bonus points because you just beat out uh, one of your friends at the cornflakes game. 
So then you go and you get on the bus. The bus? Why am I taking the bus? You're taking the bus because the government has started giving out all kinds of bonus points to people who use public transportation. And you can use these points um, for, for tax incentives. And while you're sitting on the bus riding to work and you're playing your little Tetris and getting a few points here and there, you suddenly remember, I had this dream last night. I had a dream that my mother was dancing with this giant Pepsi can. And then you realize, oh yeah, the remtertainment system, right, which is the thing you put in your ear and it can sense when you enter REM sleep. And then it starts putting little advertisements out there to try and influence your dreams. And then you can fill out a little form. It's a test to see if those things came through into your dreams. And if they did, then um, big points for you, right? And you can use these points at the grocery store or whatever. And you get to work on time. Good job. Excellent. You got to work on time. And uh, you, you get a, a special bonus, um, I don't know, for something else. And maybe because you've been there on time all week. And then there's your office mate. And he's like, check out, I got the new digital tattoo, right? It's a tattoo that you can change the image because it's got like e-ink in it in your arm, right? So you can change the image all the time to whatever you want. But a lot of people are using Tattoogle AdSense, right? And so he's got the ads up. And you're thinking, you're really dumb because Tattoogle AdSense has light sensors in it. And uh, so that when your arm is covered, uh, you're not going to get any money from people seeing the ads. And you show them how yours is lower on the arm, so it's more exposed, so you get more points for it. And just then, you realize that the two of you have your ads suddenly synchronized just by chance. And so, you know, you say, link sync. And you get 30 points for noticing a link sync that the two of us had that. And he says, Pop-Tarts, because they're both Pop-Tart ads. And the system is listening, and it can tell that we said Pop-Tarts. And then we do high five, because the body electricity sensors can tell when you do a high five. And that's the rule. That's how the game works, um, that when the ads line up, because it, it makes you pay more attention to the ads, because that's how these games will work. The games will be tricking you to pay more attention to ads. So then you go to lunch, and you've had Dr. Peppers all week. And so you know you got to have another Dr. Pepper because you got 10 points, 10 points, 10 points, 10 points. And then you have another one. And there's another one. But you know there's a special with Dr. Pepper this week. If you have five Dr. Peppers in a week, 500 bonus points. So you're definitely going to take advantage of that. And then you got a meeting at another building. It's a half a mile away. And you could, you could uh, take the shuttle over. But you decide, I'm going to walk because the health insurance plan that you're on gives you bonus points if you walk like more than a mile each day. And we can sense that easily um, you know, through, through, your, through your digital shoes. And if you get your heart rate up about a certain, a certain amount, then you get uh, more bonus points from your health insurance company. So then you're going shopping on the way home. And man, this is like a place you can get a lot of points. And it's really complicated, so you don't figure it out. You let your, like, your app figure it out. It like, looks at all the point systems you have. It looks at what you want. And then it tells you which ones to buy in order to get, ooh, wow, a lot of points just because I make good choices shopping. And then you get home and your daughter's like, oh, I got my report card. And you're like, oh, good job. You're getting 2,000 points from the state for getting such good grades. And you're getting 5,000 as a parent uh, from the Obama bonus for the good parenting bonus, which you're excited because you can use that as tax relief. And then you say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you practice your piano? And she's like, yeah, I practiced my piano. Well, what score did you get? He's like, oh, well, I got 150,000. 150,000, that's the best you've ever had on that particular sonata. That's 9,000 points given by the Arts Council for your scholarship uh, fund. So, you know, go, go you, right? And then you go and watch television. And like, I don't even want to talk about this. It's just points, 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 points. Because there's eye sensors, right, that can tell when you're watching the ads. So you want to watch the ads, certain ads especially, because you're going to get points for them. And your remote has a little screen on it and with a little camera. So you can kind of be live chat with other people you know are watching the show. And you play all these games and you get all these points while you watch television. That would be a very natural um, thing to do. Then finally, oh, the day's over. You're going to bed. You sit down with your new Kindle 3.0, which of course has the eye tracking sensor in it that can tell what you've read um, and how much you've read uh, of the book. And it's important to read the whole book because uh, then if you leave a review on Amazon, you'll get super bonus points if it knows you read the whole book through. And as you finish the book, you're very surprised. Oh, did I mention that Microsoft acquired Amazon a couple of years back? But they did. And you get an achievement unlocked. <laughs> this thing's been tracking you for 20 years. You've finished 500 novels. And this is like a big achievement. And you're thinking, I'm really embarrassed that my 500th novel was this dumb Star Trek novel that I'm reading. Because like, I'm going to remember that forever. And then you start thinking about all these achievements and points and things. And realizing that you, know, you have no idea what books your grandparents read or where they went on their daily basis. But 
these sensors that we're going to have on us and all around us and everywhere are going to be tracking and watching what we're doing forever. And our grandchildren will know every book that we read. That legacy will be there, will be remembered. And you get to thinking about how, wow, is it possible maybe that since all this stuff is being watched and measured and judged, that maybe I should change my behavior a little bit and be a little better than I would have been? And so it could be that these systems are just all crass commercialization and it's terrible, but it's possible that they'll inspire us to be better people if the game systems are designed right. Anyway, I'm not sure about all that, but I do know this stuff is coming. Man, it's got to come. What's going to stop it?